Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Football Fallout. So everybody, I am working and cranking away on the 2020 Fantasy Football Almanac and Draft Guide. I have a lot of the stat work done. I have to, you know, put forward a lot of the projections. I'm starting to look into external, um, you know, projections and everything like that. Today is is the early uh, 2020 uh, top 10. Okay, I want to talk about the top 10, and this is uh, courtesy of Fantasy Pros, a company that I actually partner with with Functional Sportsaholic, at least quote unquote partner with. They don't care about me, but I care about them, damn it. Um, so Bobby Sylvester put out a way too early uh, 2020 fantasy football rankings. I have the link to that article in the show notes below. I love these articles. I love kind of taking stock of where everybody's head's at coming into the season. But I want to talk about the top 10 uh, today, and I'm just going to do a little commentary, a uh, little kind of teaser of where my head's at and what my stats are telling me coming into the 2020 season. And of course, once my book is is done, once we're in draft mode, we're going to start kicking in to the uh, to the fantasy football fallout, my analytics and, and how they relate to the rest of the fantasy world. But I'm going to go um, just from one to 10. Usually I go 10 to one. I'm going to go one to 10. Quick comments about these players, right? Uh, number one, Christian McCaffrey. Of course, he has to be number one. Here's my concern. Uh, with the new coaching staff there, um, it's not that Christian McCaffrey is suddenly going to get worse. The, my question, and it's a question we're really not going to be able to know until the first week or two of the regular season, is whether or not Christian McCaffrey is going to be utilized in the same percentage as he was before. My guess is is that they're going to try to use like Bonifin or, or any of these other kind of younger guys to help spell Christian McCaffrey. Because look, Christian McCaffrey, fantastic player. I mean, MVP quality player. He's amazing. He's not getting any worse. He's getting better. But it's all about opportunity and how much he's going to be used. What is the snap count going to be? Is he going to be like 90% of the Carolina Panthers offense? I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm worried about him. If I have the number one pick, do I take him? Yes, I do take him because you have to. But let me say this. When my draft comes up, I hope I don't have the number one pick because I don't want to, I don't want to have to make that decision. Um, and I see that I see some liability there. So I'd actually rather have kind of some, one of those picks in the middle of rounds. At least that's my thinking um, in February and in March of, uh, of 2020 here. Number two, Saquon Barkley. Again, does he have to be number two? I don't know. I mean, we saw what happened last year. Um, even when he was healthy, he wasn't as dynamic as he was his rookie season. Now, is that a criticism? I, I don't mean it to be a criticism. I still think he's a fantastic player. But coming out, my worry about Saquon Barkley is, is his body going to be able to handle the load? Well, he missed some time last year. Now we're going to, into an offensive system that's uh, coached by Jason Garrett. What do we know about Jason Garrett? What is What was his big criticism for years and years in Dallas is that he just didn't run the ball. He went to the pass. They have a young quarterback that everybody's excited about in Daniel Jones. Is he going to be the guy to carry um, this New York Giants team, or is Saquon Barkley going to carry them? I think it's a valid question. Um, I think we'll learn a little bit more once we get into training camp and specifically preseason games. I still think, like Christian McCaffrey, he has a lot of talent, but I do think there are some very valid questions here. Number three, Michael Thomas. No problem with that at all. I love Michael Thomas, um, and he, believe it or not, I mean, truly, and of course there's a long career left, he's on pace to to shatter. <laughs> shatter. Jerry Rice's uh, catch record. Um, but, you know, how long is uh, is Drew Brees going to be there? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, but I think Michael Thomas would be very good there. Number four, Ezekiel Elliott. Again, questions. You got Mike McCarthy coming in there. Um, he he had Aaron Rodgers, so it's easy to put the offense on his shoulders. But he abandoned the run game a lot. Now, Dallas has an amazing offensive line. They have an amazing running back, a two-way running back. When I mean two-way, I mean he can play the pass. He can block. Uh, in the passing game, and he can run. He's a three-down back. He's a star. Uh, just like Saquon Barkley, just like Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott's fantastic, but there are questions. That's why I would have number five on my uh, on this list, Dalvin Cook. I would move him up a little bit. Gary Kubiak, um, look, he's the guy. He was uh, in charge of the Houston Texans when Arian uh, Foster was sprung. Uh, he was in charge of the Broncos offense. Well, I guess uh, Mike Shanahan was, but he was the guy that um, was calling offensive plays when Terrell Davis was sprung. He might have still been in charge when Clinton Portis was sprung, although he might have been in Texas. Uh, I'm sorry, in Houston at that point. But I like Dalvin Cook. The only question about him is whether or not he can be healthy. Well, if he's not, you know, draft to Alexander Madison, who I think is going to be fantastic in this offense if Dalvin Cook goes down. Just make sure you handcuff those two if you do invest and Dalvin Cook early. Number six, Alvin Kamara. No problem there. Number um, seven, Derrick Henry. I move him up this list. I do. Especially, we saw what happened in the back half of the season when Tannehill took over the quarterback. It's something I said before last year is once they finally make the move and get rid of Mariota as the starter, 
and they install a quarterback that can throw for 300 yards per game and take chances downfield, things will open up more for Derrick Henry. We saw that. So I moved Derrick Henry up in my rankings. Uh, spoiler alert from my rankings. Number eight, Aaron Jones. Again, I moved him up. I like him. Number nine, which is funny, is Joe Mixon. I came under heat because I loved him coming into the season. Uh, look, Zach Taylor and that awful, <laughs> awful Cincinnati Bengals defense, what happened? The Bengals defense was so bad that the run game kind of was taken out of the equation. What shocked me was that Zach Taylor did not uh, basically include Joe Mixon in the passing game. Then they went to Ryan Finley and things got really bad. So the first eight weeks of the season, I believe that he averaged uh, Joe Mixon from scrimmage, meaning uh, rushing yards and uh, reception yards, receiving yards, uh, about 30 to 35 yards per game, which is awful. I had readers saying, hey, you, you had a good projection on Mixon. You suck, blah, 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 blah. I was like, hey, sorry, I didn't anticipate Zach Taylor completely ignoring the guy um, when they when they fall down by two touchdowns. I mean, come on, for crying out loud. Well, what happened in the back half of the season? Well, from scrimmage, he averaged. Last eight weeks of the season, he averaged 124 yards per, from scrimmage. He was a top 10 back unquestionably in the back half of the season. That's what I anticipated the full 16 weeks. So am I doubling down on, on uh, Joe Mixon this year? I am. Oh, goodness. But look, if they end up with Joe Burrow and that passing attack, I really think Joe Mixon should be there. My big criticism is not on Joe Mixon, and we all we always talk about opportunity here. Zach Taylor needs to get his head out of his butt, and he needs to include Joe Mixon because that should be the focal point of the offense, especially with a young quarterback coming in there. They need to rely on him just like they did the back half of the season. Uh, number 10 on this list is Nick Chubb. Move him way up. Stefanski... Um, coming in there from Minnesota, he's going to make him, Nick Chubb, the focal point of this offense. I've been screaming about this for two years now. Nick Chubb, listen, he averages over five yards per carry. Look at historically over multiple, over multiple seasons, how many running backs have averaged more than five yards per carry? I mean, he is, I think, the best running back in the league. You could make an argument talent-wise, certainly with Christian McCaffrey, Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, but I think Chubb gives you the best blend of uh, breakaway running power running and out of the backfield receiving uh, and, and blowing things open. They need to give him volume. The fact that, um, you know, and I think this is what, indicative of, of hiring a head coach that might not be ready for, this, for the room in Freddie Kitchens. Um, I think he was reactive to Brown's ownership. I think he was reactive to the hype. I think he was reactive to having Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham. I think they were trying to make Baker Mayfield their, their rookie quarterback who did really well in 2018. I think they were trying to make him and put too much on his shoulders. Run the ball. I've been saying this for year, for two years. Run the ball with Chubb. Things will open up in the passing game, and then everybody's a star. But if you try to force Baker Mayfield to be a star before I think he's ready to be, then I, th I mean, come on. And now you look at it, and you look at this Cleveland Browns team, okay? Do you think Baker Mayfield, seriously, do you think his ceiling can match Kirk Cousins' ceiling? I think so. I think so. I think, can, can his ceiling match a ceiling like Andy Dalton or exceeded? I think so. I think if they make Nick Chubb the focal point of this offense— I think he'll get more touchdowns. I think he'll still average five yards per carry because he can. his explosive play potential is off the charts. He's powerful enough to break tackles. I think the Browns are going to improve this year, as I've been saying for the last couple of years. I think having a coach, yes, is he a young coach? Sure. Uh, but I think they're getting back more into the analytics. I think they're going to realize that Nick Chubb is the, the star, and that's not a shot at Beckham, and it's not a shot at Mayfield, but I, I, it's just super, super confidence in Nick Chubb. I think he's the guy that they need to get me moving forward to for the rest of the season. So there's my comments on another guy's rankings at this point. I've given you a little bit of teaser, a little bit of taste of, of what I'm going to be putting out there with the Fantasy Football Almanac uh, once we get that draft out. We're going to be coming in with a lot of comment, uh, content over the next couple of weeks. Of course, mock draft content as well. So keep an eye out. Once again, please like and subscribe. Uh, share this video. If you agree or disagree, please comment. Let's have a talk about it. You know, I'm not the worst person in the world. If you think that Baker Mayfield, you know, is the top quarter, a top five quarterback in this league and needs to go on his shoulders, okay, well, tell me why, right? Tell me why you think that. And, uh, you know, we'll have a discussion about it. But let's make this interactive. Let's make this fun. 2020 fantasy football. Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So we're going to have a lot of good stuff coming out. Once again, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on another episode soon.